So next up is our very good friend, Adrian Hill. There she is from Calgary. And uh, she's going to be talking about something that is very topical. Not that the others weren't topical, but this is very current. Uh, I think it's all started since the pandemic and it's happening on TikTok. So uh, let's give Adrian all of our attention. I'm really looking to hear what the answer is to what's been going on on TikTok. You're muted. Thank you, Lois. You always look after me. <laughs> I'm just uh, getting everything ready here. And oh, that's weird. Oh, okay. Give me one second. Sorry about this, folks. For some reason, there we go. There we go. That's better. I have to stop this again. One 1,000. One 1, 1,000. Yeah, yeah. See, it doesn't matter if you've practiced this a lot. Sometimes it just doesn't want to work. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> Just I need to pull up my notes and I'm good to go. Perfect. So today my topic is TikTok ticks with teens and the pandemic. That's a bit of a tongue, tongue twister. So the first thing that I, oh, I got to. Here we go. First thing I want to do is, uh, since Susan wrote my bio for me, which said I was the galactic overlord of both time and space within the boundaries of Calgary, etc., I thought I should probably briefly give you an overview of what my background is. And first of all, I am not a doctor or a healthcare provider. I originally worked as a volunteer for Tourette Canada and now work as a quasi-volunteer for the Tourette OCD Alberta Network. And most importantly, I have three children, two who have been diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. What do I mean by a quasi volunteer? Well, I actually get paid a very small stipend for some of the work that I do. So I just wanted to clarify that. So I'm only gonna be briefly talking about Tourette syndrome in this presentation, but if you want to learn more about the topic, which I highly encourage you do, please feel free to watch my talk last year for the same skeptic camp, or go to the University of Calgary website, which I have linked there, or just Google Tourette OCD Alberta Network, and there's a whole bunch of really great videos with experts talking about the disorder. And if you want teacher strategies, I have some videos up there about how to teach people in the classroom with this disorder. So first of all, we'll talk about this new global tick phenomena that started in 2020. Uh, the Tourette Clinic at the Alberta Children's Hospital noticed a difference in the type of patient requiring treatment. The clinic saw patients with a very different presentation of ticks that were present almost exclusively in teenage girls and young women between the ages of 12 and 25. And they developed what is called a rapid onset of ticks. The patients had no previous history of ticks. Most of them didn't anyway. Uh, at least not that they were aware of, and the functional impairment was so severe it prevented those people from attending school, going to work, and many needed hospitalization. So this is really serious. This trend has continued throughout 2021, and I'm guessing it will continue into 2022. So these ticks were not may not be or most likely are not Tourette syndrome, but are viewed as a rapid, a rapid onset tick issue called functional tick-like behaviors. And this is a subset of what would be called a functional neurological disorder, which is quite well established in the neurology community, which indicates that symptoms are incompatible with a recognized neurological or medical condition. And these types of mimicking are well known. There are cases of people showing up at emergency, for example, with seizure-like symptoms, often very similar to what is seen in a movie. But upon testing, they are found not to have seizures, which, you know, and the movie seizures tend to be a little different than what a real seizure, seizure looks like. So it's like a mimicking thing. And this is the first time, though, that ticks of such a nature have been the culprit. They have seen some tick-like behaviors develop, but not to the same extent as what we're seeing now. 
The tics are referred to as functional tic-like behaviors because they are not symptoms of a neurological disorder like Tourette syndrome. Uh, in essence, functional tic-like behaviors are a problem with the nervous system, whereas a disorder like Tourette syndrome is a problem with the structure of the brain and how the neurotransmitters communicate. So let's now do a brief comparison between Tourette syndrome and these ra rapid onset tics, why they consider them to be different. With Tourette syndrome, the mean age of onset is usually six and they're usually mild tics, and it use, they're mostly male. There's a four to one ratio of boys to girls. And they, they usually involve the head. They start up at the top of the body and often start with eye tics, eye rolling, eye blinking, and nose tics. And then over the months or years, they move down the body and become more complex as the person gets older. And the vocal tics generally appear after the motor tics have been around for a while. And vocal tics, I mean noises like coughing, sneezing, and words, etc., versus motor tics, which are movements. During the early years, there is usually only one tick at a time, and it's not until later that they become more complex. The tics are usually very different between patients. If you look at my kids who have Tourette syndrome, their tics are totally different from each other. Though sometimes they might pick up a tick from each other, it was quite rare and they usually had their own symptoms. And there's a large variety of tics and they wax and wane. Now complex tics, which happen when they're older and after they've had the other tics for a while, are seen and develop over multiple years. And complex tics could be something like they have an eye rolling tic, but then they have to punch in the air following the eye rolling. It usually involves multiple muscles. So things like hopping, it's much more complicated than just a single tic. They usually involve three or four tics or two or three tics. And the tics tend to really peak at around puberty, at the start of puberty. And they usually improve in the later teens and the most common comorbidities or co-occurring conditions, and most kids do have something that are diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. And those most common ones are ADHD and obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. And so now let's compare this with the rapid onset tics that we've been seeing in the hospital here and around the world actually. So, the onset for these sudden onset ticks is usually between the age of 12 to 24, and they're mostly female. So I think you can see a difference right away, mostly female versus mostly male, and a much later age. The, the main uh, and, and probably the most interesting thing is how common the cases are. They're not all the same, but most of them have a lot of similarities, and we'll talk about that in a bit. And they tend to have a quick progression from simple tics to complex tics. And it's usually over just a few weeks instead of years like with Tourette syndrome. But sometimes it's even occurred within a few hours. I think you can imagine how frightening this would be for these young women and their families. It would be quite terrifying and they can usually arrive at emergency in quite a state. The vocal tics that tend to be common that these ladies are saying are things like beans, they go beans over and over, woohoo, knock knock. And some of the sounds are the same, like whistling or making a clicking sound. And coprolalia is almost always involved. And this is, departs from Tourette syndrome. Uh, uh, unfortunately, coprolalia tends to be what has defined it in the past because it's what Tourette syndrome is known for, but approximately 10% of people with Tourette syndrome have coprolalia versus most of the cases of these sudden onset tics show this feature. So the, the, some of the motor tics are commonly seen in the patients, are these complex tics such as the hitting other people, could you imagine it'd be awful, objects or themselves, and large radius arm movements are also very typical. And many have been recently diagnosed with anxiety or depression versus the obsessive compulsiveness and ADHD that we tend to see in Tourette syndrome. Doesn't mean we can't have depression, et cetera, with Tourette syndrome as well, or, or vice versa with sudden onset, but it's just uh, most people, it is observed this way. And I think this last bit is 
one of the things that's really drawn attention to the media. This phenomenon has been seen simultaneously in countries across the world. It's been in Canada, the UK, Australia, Germany, and the US. So one of the findings that many of these cases had in common was that the patients had been watching social media and mostly TikTok videos of people with Tourette syndrome and that they ex experienced a worsening or triggering of tick-like behaviors after viewing. The videos on TikTok site marked with hashtag Tourette have had around 3 billion views. That's a lot of views. And there was found to be a similarity between many of the tick-like behaviors seen in the clinic and the tick-like behaviors that have been, shown, have been shown on this social network. And I'd like to just introduce you to this girl. Here is an example of somebody that is on TikTok. And her name is This Trippy Hippie. And she's a young and, in my opinion, quite a delightful English woman with Tourette syndrome. She has over 14 million followers on TikTok and hundreds of thousands on Instagram and YouTube. So what did the media do when they got wind of this phenomenon? Well, here's what they started saying. There was a bit of a media sensation. And this was something that it was just a very quick Google. And I found all these. Didn't take long. The doctor's favorite people is uh, TikTok causing ticks in teens, followed by the Daily Beast with doctors blame TikTok for surge in teen girls experiencing ticks. TikTok causing ticks in teens. There's that cause again. Gotta blame TikTok. And the New York Post TikTok is giving teen girls Tourette like ticks. Doctors call it a pandemic. Now, Luckily, you know, and these are already many people who think that social media is unhealthy and dangerous, and maybe it is to some degree, there's maybe parts of it, but it is so dangerous that watching videos of people with Tourette syndrome will cause this issue. Is this true? Is it that dangerous? Well, you know, the answer is very complicated as all media related stuff is. And it's quite nicely discussed, of course, in Snopes why we can't definitively say TikTok causes ticks, and of course, in one of my favorite publications, Science-Based Medicine, don't jump to conclusions about so-called TikTok ticks. And they, reading this article, I, they mentioned a German paper that was used in many papers to justify some of these sensational headings, and even some blame, which really makes me angry. And here's a quote. I went to the Germ this paper, and it was written in English. And what it says uh, is, moreover, they can be viewed as the 21st, yes, that's not my mistake, that's theirs, century expression of a culture-bound stress reaction of our postmodern society, emphasizing the uniqueness of individuals and valuing their alleged exceptionality, thus promoting attention-seeking behaviors. And I'm going to stop there because that's the part that really gets me. It makes me very angry. The number one thing I hear from parents, teachers, and community members when they don't understand things like Tourette syndrome and ADHD and now the sudden onset tick disorder is that the person is only seeking attention. And it makes me very frustrated because it's very unfair. I, I don't know why anybody would choose these awful ticks that can be quite harmful to do purposefully. So what do we know right now? Well, it's early days for sure, and there's a lot to learn. We know that these patients are real, they're suffering, and that figuring out proper treatment plans is really important. And that means this phenomenon needs to be studied, which leads me to the next part, which there are studies that are ongoing, including at the University of Calgary, but also in the US and around the world. In fact, if you go to the website and you know somebody who has these tick disorders, you can sign up for a study right now. And people tend to imitate. For example, I think it's well known that if one person in a room yawns, then a whole bunch of people will probably yawn as well. So imitation is part of our makeup. People with Tourette syndrome have an exaggerated response to this and will tend to get new ticks through imitation. 
So it does make sense that someone perhaps with, without a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome would suddenly get worse if they watch videos of people with Tourette syndrome. So it's possible that their tics were very mild, for example. And the same thing could also be true for those prone to the functional tic-like behaviors. There's something about their makeup or their circumstances that makes them more susceptible to this mimicking behavior. And as I just mentioned, it is a possibility that it is undiagnosed Tourette syndrome. Uh, when kids are young, particularly, the tics tend to be very mild and may even be hidden. If they have a foot, you know, crunching tick, you'd never see it. So it was even hard with my oldest son, who had pretty severe tics, to get a diagnosis. So it, it can be a difficult thing to obtain. So it, it is possible that watching these videos could just make the tics suddenly worse, and now we're noticing them. Uh, and when, it, when I go to a Tourette conference, it's interesting because people with Tourette syndrome will say it's extremely draining because being around others with tics makes their tics work worse. So this is probably the most looked at possibility for what's happening right now, which is this functional neurological disorder, but other possibilities should also be looked at and ruled out for treatment purposes. And the anxiety and depression diagnosis seem to be comorbid for most cases, as I already said. And I think it's exacerbated because of this pandemic. I think that's been a big contributing factor, and that's why we're seeing such big differences now. So should TikTok be blamed? In my opinion, no. If it wasn't TikTok, it could have been movies or music or music videos or even meeting people with Tourette syndrome that could cause this mimicking behavior. TikTok just happens to be a popular place for these teens to go right now during a pandemic. So I think it's important to remember that piece. It just happens to be the one that's the most popular with these teenage girls. And based on data collected from the Calgary Children's Hospital, the functional tick-like behaviors or FTLB was one to 2% of referrals from, uh, every year. And from January to June, 2021, it was 30%. So you can see a big increase that happened. And it translates to approximately three patients pre the pandemic and about 87 patients in, six, in a six month period. So you can see there's a big increase. However, the numbers are still pretty small if you think about it. So if TikTok really did cause this problem, then there would be, we'd be seeing a lot more people than 87 patients. Our city in Calgary is about 1.3 million. And, you know, there's a good percentage of kids. So that's still a pretty small number. It's a huge increase from three to 87, well, three in a year to 87 in six months. But I would guess that if it was TikTok that was causing it, we'd see a lot more cases. So, What's also interesting is it's obviously a trigger for these particular women. So the, one of the first things that's recommended is that the patients stop watching TikToks about Tourette. That's part of their first line treatment, along with cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, medication for stopping tics is not seen as something that will be helpful just because of the nature of the disorder. So it doesn't mean that people, all people should stop watching these videos of people with Tourette syndrome. In fact, I like the idea of people watching some of these, uh, most of the videos I've seen have been very informative and it brings awareness about Tourette syndrome, which is always a good thing. And I'd like to end with a quote from the Science-Based Medicine article. And just because I think it's a really important thing to take forward. So for now, let's get those studies done and try our best to ensure that all kids who are struggling right now with tics or any other mental health symptoms are seen, heard, and helped, and not blamed for attention seeking. I'll add that one myself. Thank you for watching my TikTok TikTok. I'm sorry I couldn't resist. That's the end of my. That's I priceless. <laughs> I, I, you I, had I, to get that. I, I, I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love puns. I love all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's get. Uh, get yeah, you don't want that. 
No, I need to stop sharing. So just give me a sec because I had everything off my screen. Oh, there it moved over there. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for doing that. I <laughs> actually can do it once in a while. Let me. Yeah, find... you got the power. Where in the heck am I? Okay, here I am. Let me, you want me, let me to make myself. Spotlight you? I got it. I got it. Oop. Wait, oh, where'd you go? I I don't know. Who knows? I can add me. There we yeah. go. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. Okay, very good. Really interesting. I did not know. I was under the impression that uh, that it was a phenomenon because of you know financial reasons, people getting attention, trying to get a huge following on uh, mm -hmm. TikTok, which may trans transfer into monetary things eventually, maybe you know getting a show or something like that. So I was under the impression because they didn't fit the demographics of mainly women, there are higher age, uh, age groups. So I was thinking they probably were making it up or, or so on. And I, one of the comments we got, um, I think it was from Jan. Let me look back here a second. She says she asked about mass hysteria as an as mm. explanation, which is a real thing. And yes. And probably yeah. what's going on with um, the Havana syndrome. Right. Yeah. And, and there, there might be an element of that. From what I've read, if you read the Snopes article, it actually says it's most likely not. It's most likely, and I think the SBM article also says it, it's most likely this need to imitate. You know, that's where it comes from. And the fact that there's these few videos that are have millions, if not billions of views, they're all watching the same ones. So I think that's the common link. Mm -hmm versus an hysteria where you're kind of all in the same room. I mean, I guess you, I, I, I'd have to sort of look at the definition of mass hysteria as to whether that is sort of a similar thing as to being in the same room and all experiencing the same thing, but it could be. Right. But I think that the fact that these women, these young women have this depression and severe anxiety diagnosis immediately before this happens, I think that's more indicative of whether or not it's going to happen. We just mm -hmm. did actually a, a talk to a school with for a classroom with a girl who has undergone this and she's just in dire straits. She doesn't want to go to school. She's embarrassed. It's awful. She has no control over these ticks. And one of the things that actually happened was the students in the class started thinking, what if I get this? Oh. right I, I, if she could get it maybe I can get it but nobody else did so I think if everybody in the classroom did develop this I think we could now say maybe that's a bit of a mass hysteria happening right that makes sense I know that whenever I hear your talks about Tourette's I always start noticing the things I do more like you were <laughs> saying something about uh, starting at the head and working the way down something you know as soon as you're doing that I was going like this is my nose which is something I always do I have a little line there I've been doing it since a child but as soon as you said that I realized I was doing it and I thought you, maybe yeah. we're also paying a little more attention to some of the things that we oh absolutely that's part of it too yeah. and that kind Certainly. of thing yeah so some of the other uh, questions I had I wanted you to define the word corp corp oh corp yeah Coprolalia. Yeah, I've had a lot more practice than you say in that one. So thank you for being kind. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pronounce things. I, I had to practice that one for there's quite a few terms with the, in the, within the Trek community I've had to practice. But that one is just essentially obscene words. So they will shout out a swear word. I'll just say shut up, shut up. And you're sort of in the middle of a sentence, shut up, that kind of thing. But it's usually swearing. It can be of a sexual nature. So it doesn't have to be a swear word. It could be, you know, uh, I want to have sex with you. Like that's not an uncommon <laughs> coprolalia thing to shout at somebody, which would, you can imagine how embarrassing that would be. And Dreamly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> embarrassing and uh, yeah. hard to believe yeah. that people would do that. Well, or that they would for do attention. it. Uh, well, <laughs> you would also kind of think that maybe people are trying to do it for reals. I mean, yeah. you know, to, to be annoying or yeah. that's the, well, I think part that's of the problem, problem is they may see somebody that is really attractive. And they're, so they're thinking in their mind, oh, they're really attractive. And then well, they showed up. I we are talking about teens after all. Yeah. So I, <laughs> but, I can know, see them just, thinking that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that is kind of the problem is, is that we're, we're really, 
we, we don't have enough information on it, especially as, as you said about this recent phenomenon. We don't have enough information. Yeah. There's not been enough studies on it. And it does seem a little different. It, it does seem a little hard to distinguish between a teenager or a young person just messing around and and managing to keep it up long enough that it seems like yeah it and somebody who actually has some issues. Another thing yeah. I asked is that TikTok, and I think you kind of addressed this at the end, that you think that this is probably all the attention has probably been a good thing. Yeah, and it depends on the headline because the, it, some of the headlines, which I did not put in, blame the, the, the victim, right? Blame the women. And I think that's harmful. Mm -hmm. When you start saying things like, you know, they're just doing it for attention. They don't really have anything. This is not true. Uh, they're just watching these videos and think it's cool. Therefore, they're going to mimic them. That's harmful. Mm -hmm. But even those bad headlines that I did post, most of them did say that. It, the, the teens have no control. So then it's not it's bad, right? Then, yeah, it's, it was just clickbait titles. That, but how many people do you know? Uh, my husband's one of these. He's listening right now, I think. Uh, he, he re, he's a headline reader. And so if you just read those headlines, you would actually think TikTok was causing it mm -hmm. and that it was an attention-seeking behavior. So I think that's a problem. Definitely. Um, and TikTok may have not only has it just become a phenomenon in the pandemic, but it also seems to be a place where it's very unprofessional videos able to put up in a very short amount of time. It's a new following of a young crowd that's on phones and not necessarily yes. like YouTube or anything like that. Hello, the YouTube watchers. But um, <laughs> it, is, it seems to have become a safer place for people who have this and it's to be able to show, hey, I've got a tick, let me show you kind of thing, yes. you think? Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. And, and the phenomena is short and sweet, right? So you can flip through them very quickly and see a lot of content in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I think that with the extra time at home, I think these kids are gravitating towards these and yeah. spending more time on it. Also possibly they're just like to look at young girls. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why they have a following. Well, and it could be young girls, following well, and, the girls and like for the, the, the social reasons too the, the hippie girl who's she's adorable right she's she, i and haven't you, seen her I oh that you up. just saw that you're gonna have to look it up because i watched a couple of her her um videos and she's lovely and she's funny and she you can see how her friends and family just laugh at her tics and they laugh with her and they're you know oh don't worry she's got you know she, when she says something inappropriate to a wait staff you know it's, oh don't worry she's got Tourette syndrome she didn't mean it <laughs> you know, her so, name is hippie girl oh I, I, the what was it what was it called the flippy hippie I had it in my, my okay so I'll have to look let me ask you this next question so you can do two things at once yeah from mono <laughs> from our friend Mono, do they react with remorse or embarrassment after an outburst? Oh, yes, often. Uh, in fact, to the point that they stop going to school, they stop leaving their house. So they are so humiliated in, in many cases. And that's where what we do comes in, where we go into classrooms, we can go into workplaces just to educate people because if people know that these outbursts are uncontrollable like a cough or a sneeze we all experience stuff like this nobody thinks about a cough or a sneeze so if they know the outburst even if it is of a sexual nature or swearing or whatever it just becomes background noise so it's so important to educate people absolutely and, just like we said with linda yeah yeah exactly yeah and you know like this the flippy hippie she's there it is the trippy hippie trippy hippie thank you yeah, i always get it wrong Thank you. The trippy hippie. Thank you, Faith. Yeah, she, she uh, point blank will turn to the people and say, I'm sorry, I have Tourette syndrome. And, you know, people may say, well, just an excuse. Hopefully they don't. But I think that's what she has to do because otherwise she won't go anywhere. And that's what some kids do. That's what some young adults and older adults will do. Yeah. And they, if, the more you repress it, the more stressed you are, yeah. the more the desire to get yes. this out. And so yes. stress makes it worse. So if you're yes, in a, an environment where it's background noise, like you say, then they usually are more mild. Yes, it, they tend to go down in some yeah. yes. Interesting. So here, um, 
Karen says, do, oh, <laughs> Karen is just got to be the <laughs> kindest person I've ever met. Okay, first question from Karen is, does it occur in one sleep? That's a really good question. I know of a few people that do have their ticks in sleep. My kids, I used to go and watch them. I never witnessed ticks during sleep. So it really depends on the person. I believe, and you know, again, I'm not a doctor, but I believe from everything that I've researched, most do not tick at, when they sleep. However, they quite often have tick, sometimes very severe ticks before they go to sleep because they're tired and being tired can make the ticks worse. So it can be an issue just getting to sleep. That's, that was more of an issue for my kids. Once they were asleep, they were fine. But I do know of some people who do tick while they sleep. Hmm. Karen, okay, here's Karen saying, do they blurt out kind things? Yes. In <laughs> fact, my youngest son, he used to say, and it was a tick that was specific to me. So that's quite common. And he would look at me and go, I love you, mom. Oh, so, don't lose that tick. Don't lose that. And we were talking about that the other day. I said, you lost that tick. He goes, yeah, I know. I like that tick. <laughs> so absolutely. <laughs> Love you, mom. Love you, mom. <laughs> but yes, Karen, you have an absolute fantastic two questions in a row. Janine wants to know, did, she asked, did you say that ticks diminish as people age? Yeah, most, most people do find that they peak just as they hit puberty, sort of at 12 to 14 years of old, of age. And then they, as they head down their teens to their, you know, their twenties, they tend to reduce for most people. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, about a third of the people get better to have, to the point even of having virtually no ticks. A third stay about the same to their pre-adolescent uh, tick frenzy as I'll, I'll call it and about a third get worse so some do I do have a friend who did get worse as an adult and his ticks got became very severe gradually over time until into his 40s and he's hmm. on disability now so you know it can be very very bad but for most people yes it diminishes with age I think I've heard you say that this is a spectrum of sorts this absolutely is a huge yes. and a uh, huge area and you can't just define it in one way and that a lot of it is overlapped with other issues yes. like OCD and so there so it isn't always that somebody has Tourette's it would be Tourette's and this and this yes. and this anxiety um OCD, yes. in, in fact ADHD with my son and I'm speaking just personally here this is not necessarily what would happen with other people with Tourette syndrome but what I did notice is when his tics were really bad all his other stuff like the obsessive compulsive issues his severe anxiety his sleep would get better ironically but when his tics went down in frequency all the other stuff came back and we always said hey bring back the tics the tics you know they're kind of embarrassing they're kind of goofy but it's the obsessive compulsive tendencies and the attention issues attention deficit and these other things that actually were much more difficult to deal with and they tend to be part of Tourette syndrome unfortunately right um we're getting a question from youtube i don't know who this is they want to know is vermont maple syrup the best in the world <laughs> i have to say quebec <laughs> <laughs> A long, long running joke, you guys. If you listen Quebec. to the Skeptic Zone, Quebec, yeah. <laughs> listen to the Skeptic Zone podcast. Uh, Richard Saunders will be in in a little bit. Um, Adrian ha is one of the um, uh, contributors, I almost said hosts, for the Skeptic Zone, and she does a terrific job. She, I really do think you're going to be able to start doing voiceovers, but I don't want you to because I have other things you got to do, and that just is going to take too much of your time. So I think uh, I'd be too afraid to do that stuff. Oh, and uh, Tracy, <laughs> so it's fun. Tracy Glenn had an interesting one. I yeah. remember this too that people would say like all the oh time. Oh my the goodness! Valley girl trend yeah. is that she says is it a type of tick or is it just and like when people say um say, um um yeah or is it on that just spectrum. a habit we see think, it. yeah it's it's kind of like what I was saying before you know it is a spectrum we all have the imitation parts in our brains you know, where we want to yawn and everybody else yawns, or, you know, if you touch your nose, everybody else wants to touch their nose. Same thing with these likes and ums that are repetitive in speech. We all have that. That's normal. But Tourette just has that on steroids. Like it's just out of control, that, that impulse to say things 
that are that are uh what's the word that are misplaced mm -hmm. is the best word that i can come up with they, they're out of context out of context words right. and like and um are the are out of context words right so. right um yeah. janine asked do ticks reappear when people age and have dementia Oh, that's a question I've never been asked, and I don't know. <gasps> Janine, she's been doing these talks for years, and you've got a question she's never been asked. I've never, I thought dun, I'd dun, been dun, asked Somebody <laughs> win. Winner, winner, winner. Well, I can, I can answer one thing, which is that if I mention a tick that my kids have had in the past, especially if it was a bad one that they didn't like, they will say, don't mention it, it will come back. So it could. My guess is it could, but it is only a guess. Yeah, I've heard. I, okay, so do we know if ticks occur in animals where Mara wants to know? Oh, now that is one I have been asked, but it's been a lot of years, and you know how memory is not very good. So Makes I will give you an, <laughs> from what I understand, dogs can have it. So I don't know. I can't verify that right now, but I do remember something in my brain that said that dogs can have it. And if dogs can have it, I'm guessing other animals can as well. But that is something I would have to look up. That's just based on a very long time ago memory because students used to like to ask that question. Yeah. Well, you would see a dog, you know, sleeping in their, their good yes. leg. Yeah. You know, and, and that that isn't a tick. No, that's, that's not a tick. Difference. So yeah, uh, it would be something when they're awake and walking around. They're they're blinking at you or swearing at you. That's what they're doing when they're barking. They're swearing. At you. <laughs> That's it. All dogs have Tourette. <laughs> Karen Karen says, <laughs> "This is for the benefit of those people watching the video afterwards." She says in chat, she, <laughs> "Where is it? Gosh, it moves." And I can't. Oh, they they blurt out, "Want to have sex?" And they smoke cigars and play poker. Bad dog. Bad dog. That, yeah. <laughs> Uh, her cap uh, Tracy says, I heard captive tigers will get repeated behaviors like pacing or head bobbing when in captivity. And Jan says dogs can have OCD. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. guess we're more alike than we thought. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't surprise me. Very interesting. You know, um, we, as I said, I've had, I've listened to uh, Adrian do a lot of these talks and threads. It's really interesting. And um, I know she's available to do talks to classrooms if you mm -hmm. she'll zoom in, get it? Zoom in. Yep. She's been doing a lot of that do since the pandemic. <laughs> uh, she's very kind about how she does this. From what I understand, this is a big bullying topic, and mm -hmm. um, people will they take it personally that um, you know some of the things that are said, and it's a very small percentage of people, like you said, who have the who have the tick that where they speak. It's swear words. Swear. They have most, yeah, yeah. most have vocal tics. They have, to have Tourette syndrome, you have to have the vocal and the vocal. Tics. But it, yeah. the swearing thing is not necessarily the, um, no, isn't as is common. Right. But in a classroom setting, and you've got somebody who's clearing their throat off and, you know, uh, making it, situations that kind of could be distracting and stuff like that. I could see yeah. definitely how that could be a problem. And bullying big time and what adrian does and this is from what i've heard how she kind of does it like if a child in the classroom has ticks then sometimes what she'll do is she will be asked to speak to the classroom as a whole not to call that child out okay. but to hi we're going to have a talk from somebody today who's knows who's going to talk about this phenomena called uh, you know tourettes and she explains it like that and she explains it to the class in general not necessarily any way of focusing on that specific yeah. child so the child isn't embarrassed is that how it works yeah it depends sometimes the child wants to be acknowledged sometimes they take part in the presentation it depends mm -hmm. on what they're ready for if it's a new diagnosis diagnosis very rare that they actually want to be outed I guess is the way to mm -hmm. call it but if they've had it for a few years they're usually really comfortable about sharing the information and I go in and help with that. So yeah, we, we let them know what's happening and the kids are very smart. They're not going to think, you know, they're, they're, they're going to know who we're talking about usually fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. I quite often hear, Oh, it's just like such and such, you know, from, <laughs> <laughs> declared from <laughs> and quite often, like the, the person who's <laughs> in this room who's always doing that. Yeah, that will happen. So the, the, I always, talk with the family beforehand because just talking about the ticks as I said make them worse 
So usually we see an increase in symptoms for a couple of weeks after the presentation if they are in the classroom. But I also want them to see the change in the mood of the classroom that usually happens. The understanding, the light bulbs that go on that go, that's why they do this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we do an empathy exercise. And I think the empathy exercise. Oh, I loved that. Oh, I love yeah. that. You yeah. guys have got to watch some of her talks. I know that you and I have done a talk and this empathy exercise is really, really amazing. It's, it's um, pretty good. Deborah says horses do a thing called cribbing where they grab something with their teeth and suck air. Mm. Okay. And Romero says, do people, <laughs> only Deborah would know that. Um, Romero says, do people oh. have cheeks in their dreams? I've never been asked that one either. That <gasps> I remember. I, I can't too. believe it. Two, 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 we have two. I don't know. That was rude. I will have to yeah. ask my kids and I can get back to you whether or not they do. And that doesn't mean that everybody does or does not. But my guess is why not? Well, that makes sense. <laughs> um, one of <laughs> I had a dream last night that Deborah had come to my house. It wasn't this house. It was a house I grew up in. And, and she had, I wa wa walked out aside and, and all was set up. We had a little table with a big old, all this food for the, for the camp for today. So I was just, I forgot I was going to tell people that Deborah, I had a dream about Deborah having an all organized big screen TV and people were outside watching this happening right now. Of course, they were freezing for some reason because it was outside. They were in oh. Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and she had it all organized and I didn't have to do anything so I, that was really thank you Deborah for doing that for me I know it's a dream but <laughs> but uh, that is oh one of the things I wanted to mention is that um, a lot of times ticks go away in situations where people are concentrating on yes. like your son is an amazing guitarist yes and when he's playing nothing no ticks. And, and I've heard that true also like people who are singing or yeah. people who are concentrating on some complex or not complex, but a task, like so, playing something video they games love to do. Yeah. Something where they're completely absorbed in yeah, something It takes else. concentration and they love doing it. Are very, very the interesting. And Deborah says, you were definitely dreaming. <laughs> 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 it was clear as day. I walked out of the bedroom and there was this, all these people outside and there was tables and food and freezing. It was freezing. And yeah, it was my idea of freezing is like 40, 45 but <laughs> the people. And I was walking around going, hi, hugging people and going, oh my gosh, you know, who I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah, I know it was nobody had masks on, but it was my dream because that was just totally how that is. But anyway. Thank you so oh, much, Adrian. This uh, is Lo really Lois talk. just had an interesting comment sure. about stuttering. She says people don't stutter when they are singing. And that's a, a similar, definitely a similar type thing. And actually stuttering can be a symptom of Tourette's syndrome. You can stutter without having Tourette's syndrome, but you can have Tourette's syndrome and stuttering be one of the... Yeah, symptoms. as we said, there's, there's a whole, they could all be overlapped on each other. It's complex. Yeah. Seek out some help yeah. with a therapist. And, yeah. you know, if you guys are running into a situation where you think it would be helpful, ask Adrian. Maybe she yeah. will come and talk to your class. Look how nice she is. She's <laughs> well, just... And not only that, I know that the Toretto CD, the Alberta network, I know it says Alberta, but I know that they get requests for information from all over the place, all around the world. Yeah. So, so just like when we were talking about attachment therapy, the best way to help and is to spread these kind of information. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I've learned a zillion things from her, not just from this talk, but I sure learned a lot about TikTok and not having... Um, that my impression of what was going on was completely yes. not yeah. correct. So yeah. I don't know. All right. So thank you, Adrian, so thank much. You. All right.